Using great creativity uh, with his veto pen, uh, Governor Evers struck out a provision that added a revenue limit authority for the 2024 through 25 school year uh, to instead replace it with funding until the 2425 uh, school year or approximately 400 years later. Uh, my name is Lucas Weber. I'm a deputy counsel at the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty in Milwaukee. Here in Wisconsin, our governors have very broad line item veto powers. It's uh, the most powerful veto pen in the country. Uh, what Governor Evers did was he struck the uh, two zero before the year 2024 and the hyphen. So what was left was 2,425. Um, he thus rewrote the bill that the legislature sent him um, and in doing so, um, increased spending authority for the next 400 years on an annual basis. So every year for the next 400 years, uh, school districts in the state of Wisconsin will uh, now, unless that's changed at some point in the future, receive uh, an additional $325 in spending authority. The cumulative impacts of, of this are astronomical. So over the next 10 years, recall that's $325 per year, but then that gets built into the base for the following year. So uh, next year it would be $325, 10 years from now, over current year base, it would be $3,500 per student in additional spending. Um, and over the next 20 years, uh, 20 years from now, we'll be spending approximately $5 billion uh, more annually than we are now as a direct result of this veto. Uh, cumulatively, over the next 20 years, that comes out to about $57 billion in new spending over the next 20 years. Um, now, this is spending authority. So what it means is if the legislature doesn't provide that money to the school district, the school district can simply property tax for it. So the school district gets this money. Uh, how they get it is either going to come from state taxpayers uh, through the aid formula, or it will come from local property taxpayers. Either way, the taxpayers on Wisconsin are on the hook for uh, significant spending increases over the next 400 years. Here in Wisconsin, school districts themselves are taxing authorities. Uh, they have what's called a revenue limit that is set at the, by state law every year. So they can only have, um, if the revenue limit is $100 and the state provides them $75, they can only property tax for the remaining $25 up to their revenue limit. Um, so what the governor did was he increased their revenue limit on a per pupil basis by $325 per year. So a school district with one student, for example, would have an additional $325 in uh, spending authority. Um, so what basically whatever's left uh, that the state doesn't cover, the local school district can levy a property tax on its residents to make up the difference up to their revenue limit if they want to go that high. So, you know, it's not clear to us that this partial veto would uh, or should withstand judicial scrutiny. Um, governors of both parties in Wisconsin have uh, used and abused the line item veto power for decades. The people of Wisconsin have almost always responded via constitutional amendment to rein in the power uh, of the veto pen. Um, we've done that several times here. Uh, just a couple of years ago, there was litigation that my firm brought uh, challenging some of Governor Evers' early vetoes from his uh, first budget, in which he essentially just recreated and, and recrafted proposals that the legislature explicitly rejected, among other things. Um, and the Supreme Court in that case actually struck those vetoes down. Um, it's not clear to us that uh, these current, this current veto, the 400-year veto, would withstand judicial scrutiny under under either of the standards put forward in that case, um, and, and and that certainly uh, lends itself to a legal challenge um, that could be brought. Uh, and as I said, the people of Wisconsin could even amend their constitution again uh, to to take away this power. The uh, the current constitution provides that in exercising a partial veto, the governor cannot create a new word by rejecting individual letters in the words of the enrolled bill. Um, so the question, I guess, would be, can the governor who can't strike letters to create new words, can he strike digits to create new numbers? Um, and, and, you know, that's, uh, I guess, an open question uh, that our court could answer. Or, again, the people of Wisconsin could clarify via amendment. Certainly the governor's supporters are, are cheering it on. Uh, they believe it, it's democratic. They believe they elected him to, to wield this power. Um, I think objectively it, it is inherently undemocratic. Uh, here you have uh, the people who elected the legislature and are represented here in Wisconsin in the Senate and Assembly 
to write laws, uh, have written a law. They intended uh, one thing, the governor's veto uh, makes it something completely else, something completely different. I, I think that's uh, inherently undemocratic. And, and I think the people of Wisconsin generally historically have agreed. Certainly legal action is possible. That's something that we're looking at. I, I'm sure others are looking at it as well. But um, the amendment route is something the legislature could initiate here in Wisconsin as well. Um, for an amendment to be passed, uh, it has to be adopted by two consecutive legislatures uh, and then adopted by the people of Wisconsin at a statewide referendum. So that's a process the legislature could, could implement now. Um, and certainly it's, it's possible that you see some legal action going forward in the future, although you know, it's unclear what the outcome of, of that could be. Um, you know, the one thing is for certain that uh, the Wisconsin line item veto will continue to make news uh, going forward.